Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a drama, romance, thriller, and science fiction film called Z for Zachariah. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. And Burden resides in a post-apocalyptic world as most of the world's resources are lost to radiation. Her only companion is her dog, Pharaoh, and they spend all their time together on her family's farm. She leads a very routine life, mostly gathering food and setting traps for stray animals. One day, she comes across a wagon on an old road, curious about its contents. Anne and Pharaoh hear distant footsteps, so they hide by the road and see a person in a hazmat suit. They secretly follow him until he finally reveals himself. Inside the suit is another survivor named John Loomis, who is an engineer. After assuring that the area is free from radioactive air, he removes his suit and exalts in joy for finally breathing fresh air. Ant and Pharaoh follow him to a nearby waterfall, where John bathes himself, knowing that the water is contaminated, and instructs him to get out of the water, but John is shocked to see her. Instead, he points a gun at her and fires it elsewhere, thinking that she does not come in peace. Finally, John listens to Anna and gets out of the water. The water sickens him immediately, making him rush back to his wagon for some medicine. With Anne's help, John regains his strength after the medicine is injected into him. Not only does she rinse him off, but she also welcomes him into her home. While John rests, and brings the wagon and sees pictures of John and a woman who might have been his wife. For days, John is bedridden, but Anne makes sure that he receives the care he needs. One night, she hears her poor visitor have a nightmare, and she comes to his room to comfort him as he sleeps. John grows weaker by the day, and Anne sympathetically looks at him by the bedside. She sincerely prays for John's recovery and desperately wishes for him to stay with her. Remarkably, John's health starts to improve, slowly becoming part of Anne's rural life. Both of them humbly talk about life before the apocalypse while Anne shows a picture album of her family. She is left alone after the rest of her family members set a journey to find other survivors, but they never returned. Anne especially misses her younger brother, who she was extremely close to, so she shows John a picture of him. As an engineer, John theorizes that Anne's farm is sheltered from radioactive contaminants because of the rocky hillsides and favorable weather patterns. After their conversation, Anne gets up and hugs John, a gesture she has not done in such a long time. The following day, John comes out of the house to watch Anne work around the farm, noticing an old tractor. According to Anne, she ran out of gas last year and has not used it ever since. John instructs Anne how to pump gas manually from an abandoned station nearby with his knowledge about machines. She follows his instructions written on paper and eventually succeeds in acquiring sufficient gas, making the long disused tractor finally run. At dinner, John notices how much of a devout Christian Anne is. He talks about his journey before Anne found him, saying that he lived a mile underground. John left because he could not take being in there anymore, without the sight of the sun and the sky. Then, Anne asks about John's wife after seeing the pictures in his wagon, but he says that it is just a girl from the past. That night, both of them feel a growing sense of attraction toward each other, but thoughts of it are dismissed. John and Anne spend the next day by the pond, where she offers him fresh fish, something he has never had in a long time. While John enjoys his sumptuous meal, Anne recalls the last winter when she almost froze and starved to death. Because of her broken generator, she could not stock up on fish and other food inside the fridge. Upon hearing she has a generator, John offers to fix it, hoping that it would help them store more food. While fixing it, John believes that they could utilize the contaminated waterfall as a source of hydroelectric power. It could work with a water wheel constructed from the church's planks and woods, which means that the holy building should be demolished to get the parts. And becomes uncomfortable with his proposal, claiming that her father built it and preached there every Sunday. The building is more than just a structure to her as it holds deep sentimental value. After persuading in a couple of times, John eventually decides not to pursue the project. For the following days, they work together around the farm to supply food and other resources. At this point, they both see flaws in each other, rooted in their work ethic and spiritual beliefs. In the abandoned mini-mart, and sees John drunk with empty bottles of beer surrounding him. John mocks her for consuming all of the sweet stuff on the shelves, but not the beers on the fridge. Despite this, Anne helps him get up and brings him home to rest. As she removes his dirty clothes, John becomes agitated and shouts at her for helping him too much. He repeatedly says that he does not need her help at all, even pinning her against the wall. Anne's timid nature is shaken as she has never interacted with behavior like John's in the past, making her walk out of the room fearfully. Realizing that he is at fault, John offers his sincere apology in the morning, to which Anne accepts willingly. They continue to work together as if nothing happened the night before. 
At dinner, Anne surprises John with a bottle of wine, which they share. After a couple of glasses, both of them become tipsy and dance together in the living room. The moment becomes gradually intimate, which leads to their very first kiss. John and Anne head upstairs and arrive on the verge of engaging in a sensual relationship, but he hesitates. In his opinion, being intimate with Anne will completely change things between them, but it does not change the fact that he likes her. He also adds that they need more time to know each other before cuddling her in the same bed. On a regular day of monitoring the farm, Anne notices changes in her traps and Pharaoh being more excited. Her dog runs out of her sight, and as she follows it, a third survivor, Caleb, reveals himself. Apparently, Caleb has already befriended Pharaoh, as he has already spent some days on the farm. He asks Anne for a glass of water, bringing her to the house but is taken aback by John holding a rifle. And hurriedly runs to calm him down and introduces the two men to each other. When the commotion subsides, Caleb shares that he walked 50 miles from a mine in search of food and other resources. He is welcomed on the farm, but John says he has to camp outside for the time being, as he picks some radiation along the way. However, Anne's kind nature could not stand leaving anyone outside while she enjoys the comforts of her home, so she invites Caleb inside. All three of them share a meal and tell stories about the horrors of being in the apocalypse. John says that before arriving at the farm, he stumbled upon a sickly teenager covered in dirt. He attempted to take care of the boy, but his body was just too weak. The boy begged him to kill him out of mercy, an act he obliged to do. On the other hand, Caleb also shares a traumatic experience inside the mine he was trapped in. During his first week, he saw multiple men kill each other because of their dreadful conditions. After the meal, Anne gives Caleb a tour around the house, as John feels a sense of jealousy. John keeps reminding Anne to be aware of Caleb because they do not know anything about him just yet, and he may be a dangerous person. They get into a heated argument about John's mindset about some issues, and they arrive at the topic of the boy he killed. John sits with Anne at the table and reveals that the boy he killed is Anne's lost brother. Lost for words, Anne could not even look him in the eye, just fighting her tears over the shocking news. The following day, John and Caleb decide to go turkey hunting within the area. While they walk around, Caleb emphasizes his spiritual connection with Anne and suggests a light-hearted wager for her affection, which John does not take well. Compared to John's serious and logical personality, Caleb is more laid-back and easygoing. Both of them walk to the nearby waterfall, where John explains the cancelled project about the water will that could be a power source. Over dinner, Caleb brings up the water will project to the table, which John feels uncomfortable with, and explains that the building holds a place in her heart, but she is now open to the idea of rebuilding something else. Taken aback by her response, John tells Anne that she does not have to push through with the water will if she isn't ready yet. Pressured by Caleb's remarks, and gives a go signal on tearing the church down for materials. The next day, work commences on the water will project as they gather wood from the sacred building. Slowly, the building becomes a structure until there is nothing left of it but a distant memory of Anne's father. While working on it, Anne and Caleb start having a bond between them, which John immediately notices. They start exchanging glances that hint at their attraction toward each other. As the project progresses, so does their closeness. After the demolition, Anne and Caleb walk in the woods and end up in the nearby cave. They talk about their shared faith in the Christian religion, claiming that it is the only thing that gets them going. As they arrive back on site, John has already made a lot of progress in constructing the water wheel. The simple structure gives them more hope that life in this post-apocalyptic world could improve in the simplest ways. That night, John requests to talk with Anne in private, claiming that he has to tell her something important. Perceiving the attraction between Anne and Caleb, he awkwardly gives her consent to be in a relationship with Caleb. However, Anne finds it odd for him to say that, as she has her consciousness to know to pursue whatever and whoever she wants. When she defends herself, John makes a discriminating remark and says that he won't stand in her way to explore with someone else. His words of unsolicited advice throw Anne off, making her walk out of the room. All three of them spend the next days constructing the water will around the contaminated waterfall. After remarkable progress, they hold a celebratory dinner as a big break from their accomplishment. After a couple of drinks, they decide to plunge into the pond, where they continue to have fun. When it becomes too cold, they decide to return to the house and end the night. Not long after, John tearfully expresses his love for Anne, which she finds difficult to believe. She holds hands with the intoxicated John on the way home and guides him as he passes out in bed. And here's Caleb still awake in his room from the hallway, so she walks toward it, hoping that he would notice. Caleb expectedly opens the door and welcomes her inside before they make love after days of exchanging flirty looks. At daybreak, 
The tension grows in the once peaceful household because of the unofficial love triangle. As Caleb makes his way to the porch to sit with Anne, John immediately gets an idea of what happened the night before. Later, John and Caleb finish the water wheel structure and move the flume into place above the waterfall. While John is in charge of keeping the ropes in place, Caleb does the more risky job of securing the flume in place. Finally, the project turns out smooth and successful, making them smile and forget their rivalry for a moment. Cramped in a hazmat suit, Caleb slips during the rope-assisted climb, but John luckily pulls him up just in time. Just as John gathers the ropes for safekeeping, Caleb slips on the mossy surface once more, but John pulls him again. However, John stops the pull, and the two men intently lock eyes while Caleb still teeters on the edge of the cliff. Right after, John returns to the house alone, where and apologizes for making their relationship unclear. John cuts her in the middle of the conversation and says that Caleb decided to leave and travel south. Clearly, Anne is taken aback, but she does not waste any second and runs outside, hoping that Caleb is still around. Without sight of him, Anne lapses into complete shock and silence. Meanwhile, John stands on the edge of the cliff where Caleb used to be and checks the depth of the waterfall. After days of dwelling on Caleb's sudden disappearance, and finds that the electricity in the house has been restored. She happily runs outside and finds her beloved organ in the barn, where she plays a hymn. Shortly after, John enters and listens while clapping his hands as if a sense of guilt overtakes him. With the title alone, biblical concepts are relevant to the film. Though the post-apocalyptic setting portrays the end of the world, it is also comparable to the beginning, where only one man and woman walk the earth. Like in the Garden of Eden, and gave into temptation and sought pleasure, who is Caleb? The reason behind Caleb's disappearance is not disclosed. Whether he died or really left, only John knows. The relationship between the two men parallels the biblical story of Abel and Cain, whose rivalry ended in a tragedy. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.